Finding good co-founders. My co-founders, Mike, Michael and I all met during law school where we were basically giant nerds to the point where we spent our first like major chunk of time together at an Australian Law Students Association meeting. Really nerdy. Um, anyway, we stayed friends throughout our study days and after our study days and we mucked around with lots of business ideas and campaigns, all failed. Um, <laughs> and one of them that involved like building a giant eye in a park in Sydney for a Google flyover. Long story, let's not even go there, but the point of all of this is that we realised from early on that we worked together well. We came together to try out the idea that we'd become Shoes of Prey and it's been amazing. I don't think I could ask for better co-founders. I get asked a bit, you know, how do you find great co-founders? And I think it's really tricky if it doesn't come about organically like it did for us. So I sat down and I had to think about the things that help us to really work as a founding team and the characteristics that I would look for if I had to go through looking for co-founders again. So first characteristic is people who possess complementary skill sets. So Mike, Michael and I all studied slightly differently. So Mike did law and IT, Michael did law and commerce, and I did law and international business. Mike, after university, went on to work with Google in advertising and then as a software engineer. Michael went into Google, but that was after working for one of Australia's fastest growing retailers. So he had great operational retail skills. And I went from being a banking and finance lawyer into an advertising agency where I learned about building brands and marketing. I obviously am the one of the three who's super excited about women's shoes as well. So at the very beginning, you can see that we had IT operations and branding covered, which were all pretty important. Two, people with diverse ways of approaching an issue. So partly because of our different disciplines, but mostly because of our different personalities, the three of us approach issues in very, very different ways. And I will admit that it has been the cause of some tension between us, but ultimately that's good tension. The reason it hasn't been bad tension that's been the catalyst for a breakdown or anything like that is because we always come from everything on the premise that we totally believe in what we're doing and each other. Have a very close, frank, honest relationship. I'll admit that Mike, Michael and I didn't always have this sorted out. It took a change maker coming into our business to help us to foster that much better in a clearer, more direct way, but today it's really solid. So some of the things that that change touched upon were not catching feedback in a ton of compliments so that it gets confusing, just being very direct with each other. Addressing things right when they happen so that feedback is really present and you can understand what the problem was. Not letting feelings get in the way of being direct with each other. You know, we're quite close, the three of us, and it was so important that we really did talk about those tough issues and confront them. Being much clearer about our roles, what we had to deliver, and holding each other accountable. Number four is trust. This has always been a core pillar to the relationship that Mike, Michael and I have. I will admit that when Michael and I separated, it was definitely challenged for both of us. You know, it's really hard for both of us to just foster that again when you know there is damage that is done to trust when you come out of a relationship, even if it's done really amicably. But that being said, we've worked through that a lot and I'm pleased to say that it is still something that is really core to the three of us working together. Five is being dedicated to the same vision. So Mike, Michael and I were always committed to Shoes of Prey being a global, you know, fast growing company. And I think that's very, very different, especially in terms of a lifestyle choice than having a lifestyle company where you want to do something so that you can work less hours and, you know, kind of take more holidays and things like that. They're very, very different commitments and it's really important that the founding team is united on that vision. When I get asked about finding a great founding team, the things above are totally the things that I would look for, just purely out of my experience. So, if you're watching this video because you are about to put together a founding team and start a business, I'm so excited for you, that's awesome. Please put any questions below and I will do my best to answer them and help out. Uh, if, on the other hand, you have put a founding team together before or you have watched a founding team to come, come together before, please go ahead and leave your experiences in the comments as well. It'd be great for the people who are about to go on that journey and I would just love to hear from you and hear about your experiences. So I'll be back next week with another video. For now, please do subscribe and don't forget, do everything before you're ready. Bye.